everybody to another episode of Walk It Down. My name is Devin Brooks. This is my co-host Zach Garrett. How you doing, man? What's going on? And we just gonna get right into it this week. Uh, a lot of news going on. Uh, it's very, very sports heavy. Football season is right around the corner. Baseball season is is is, is in the in in the uh, whirlpool. Basketball season is over, but you know the off season is just like another season. So we're gonna start with the uh, basketball off season. And we're going to start with the free agency. A lot of free agency moves over the weekend and uh, signings, new faces in new places. So uh, why don't you tell me about um, your three winners and three losers of the NBA free agency for the first couple of days. All right. Well, I mean, it's going to sound kind of biased coming from me. <laughs> but, you know, i got to have – I got to have my L.A. Lakers as my third winner. Oh. Um, I mean, everybody say they're old, but the Lakers got some solid players, man. Uh, they brought in some three-point shooting that they lacked last year. Um, when you when you bring in Carmelo Anthony, Dwight Howard, Trevor Ariza, Malik Monk was an absolute steal. Wayne Ellington shot over forty percent from the three last year. Kent Bazemore shot over forty percent from the three last year. Got Kendrick Nunn on the taxpayer mid-level exception. Um. You bring back Taylor Horton Tucker, mm -hmm. uh, what was that, three years, like 32 30, million or yeah, something like that. Big, big now, I hated to lose Caruso. I did too. I hated that. Um, we lose Schroeder, we got rid of Kuzma. We got rid of Kuzma. I, don't, I think we're going to regret that. I, I don't. <laughs> I, I, I don't. I don't think we're going to regret it at all. Kuzma Harrell, we did get rid of KCP. KCP was a was a useful rotational piece. He was our best wing defender. He was our best three point shooter. But you, but you can make an argument that he was just as bad, if not worse, than Kuzma was last season. But he don't shoot in the volume that Kuzma do. <laughs> he don't make the bad decisions that Kuzma. Kuzma's basketball IQ is about like an ant's. If he's not scoring the basketball, he's not helping you because. He's not a consistent rebounder. He's not a consistent defender. If he's not putting the ball in the hole, what are you getting? <laughs> so with Kuzma's skill set, if he was six foot five, he'd be working for UPS. <laughs> and the trade for Russ, I'm not. I wasn't really sure how I felt about the trade for Russ when we first got him. I didn't know. I didn't know if I liked the fit. But when you put the pieces around with some shooting. You can spread the floor for LeBron and AD and Russ, mm -hmm. and Russ will have them drive the lanes. And depending on the lineups, I don't know whatever Bogues does with his lineups. Because he's not good with rotations. Yeah, he's not. We saw that over the last couple of years, even in the championship year. He really didn't have a rotation. Um, then I got to go with the um, I got to go with the Chicago Bulls. I love what the mm -hmm. Chicago Bulls did. Let's see, brought in Kyle Lowry, mm -hmm. NBA champion, multiple time All Star, hard nose. Kyle Lowry, what's your name? Huh? Kyle Lowry went to Miami. Oh, it, I'm looking at my wrong, right. wrong note. Wrong note. Sorry, sorry. Lots of ball. DeMar, De, DeMar DeRozan. Mm -hmm. Solid. Mm -hmm. Mid-range score. I thought, uh, try to pick him I thought they were too. <laughs> and then I saw the rush trade. I was like, there's no way we get DeMar because he don't he don't spread the floor enough. He, he no. won't shoot the three. Uh, he's a heck of a mid-range shooter. He can get to the hole and create his own shot. We saw a lot of them facilitating in San Antonio. Mm -hmm. uh, Lonzo Ball. The player that I wish we could have held on to in the Anthony Davis trade. He's improved his three-point shot. He shot 38, almost 39% from the three last year. Okay, he's a pass-first point guard. He's really he's not really a traditional point guard. He's more of a transition point guard. Mm -hmm. it's, it's getting the ball. Once he gets the outlet pass, he's looking to throw the ball up the floor. He's looking to get the offense uh, set up. He's mm -hmm. looking to get it accelerated. Uh, they brought in Alex Caruso. Mm -hmm. um, solid defender. Solid from the three-point line and just basically do what you need him to do. Uh, Tony Bradley, I mean, and they only, they lost Daniel Tice via sign and trade. And then the Miami Heat, man. Mm -hmm. uh, Kyle Lowry. P.J. Tucker, hard-nosed defender, knockdown corner three-ball shooter. Uh, they got Morris Twin that, that the Lakers had, Marquise. He did, he played, he played a solid role with us in the championship yeah, year. Didn't really do really do much last year. Mm -hmm. um, and they brought in Dwayne Dedman. And then uh, re-signing Jimmy Butler, getting him paid, and Duncan Robinson, three years, 30 million. Mm -hmm. sure. um, and they brought back uh, 
Good old default. He's, Black Panther. If that man can stay healthy. If he can stay healthy, yeah, they in good shape. If he can stay healthy, man, this um, could be Miami and Brooklyn. You West think so? The Eastern Cup's finals, man. Um, my losers, man, I, I have to say Philadelphia. Yeah, they didn't do anything. Everybody got, got, got better, and they stayed the same. Yeah, At best, they are the fourth best team in the Eastern Conference. Uh, let's see, what did they do? They got Andre Drummond, <laughs> but that signing really didn't make sense to me. Andre Drummond wanted to be the starter for the Lakers, but you go and play behind the best center in the NBA, you're not going to get a whole bunch of runs. Who we don't get along with. Yeah, who, I mean, they say there's no beef, but, and George Nyang, whoever that is, I, I don't know. They didn't move Ben Simmons. They they need to move on from Ben Simmons. This man has cut off all contact with the team. He ain't answering phone calls, messages, nothing. Well, I still think they're in the process of trying to find a deal for him uh, because they had, had, had shopped him around. Darren Morey, uh, he kind of – he gave – They're the, asking too much. Well, yeah, that's what I was about to say. He gave a uh, – what team was that? He, he asked for – The Warriors. They, yeah, tried, they yeah. wanted uh, – who did they want? They wanted Wiseman. Wiseman, wanted, Wiggins. What's the wingman's? Uh, Wiggins. Wiggins. They wanted and four first-round picks. Four first-round picks and then some pick swaps yeah, or something. <laughs> the asking price is, is way too high for a point guard that is limited offensively. Now, he's great on the defensive end, but he's reached the ceiling on the offensive end. Mm-hmm. Um, let's see. You bought back Danny Green, which is okay, but two years, 20 million? Ten million a year for Dan Green. That's a lot. Who's inconsistent? I mean, he led the league in corner three point percentage last year, I think. But uh, I just don't know. He, he's not the same Danny Green he was in San Antonio. No, he's man. not because he wasn't. He's not that guy anymore. He never will. <laughs> I mean, I mean, it just it comes with age. I'm, I'm not trying to be funny. I'm not trying to disrespect man, but it just comes with age. Um, the New Orleans Pelicans, mainly mainly Zion. Um, he's out in the cold, man. You lost your point guard. Mm-hmm. You signed Willie Green as coach. I, I, you don't like that move? I don't like that move at all. Well, he's better he than Stan Van Gundy. Could have kept Stan Van Gundy. <laughs> and the rumor, rumors are Zion wants out. Yeah, I, I heard that too. Man, you, you've you done nothing in free agency. Well, he's too young to be excellent. Uh, you got Devontae Graham signing trade. I think you overpaid for him. Uh, whoever Thomas Saturinsky is and Garrett Temple is a spot up three point shooter. And D D Luzak. Who who was that? Uh, I your guess is as good as mine. Yeah, I don't know. And my number one loser, man, it's gotta be a Portland Trailblazer, man. Portland? I, I feel sorry <laughs> for Dane, man. The man has made it known that they need help over there. And you go get Cody Zeller and Tony Snell. That's like me telling you to go get me a lawnmower and you bring me a pair of scissors. <laughs> now, I do like Norman Powell, man. You brought back Norman Powell, but you still have that same undersized backcourt that can't guard anybody. Norman Powell is a solid, he's a okay defender. You got rid of Zach Collins, but you brought in Cody Zell. Mm-hmm. I mean, that, that's, that's, my, that's my three winners. That's my three losers. Well, I like that list, and uh, you know, mine is mine is pretty much the same. But uh, I'm just like you. Know, I'm gonna be a little biased here, but I, I'm not gonna have the Lakers number one. You know, I want to. I ain't have them but number one. Now. I, I know. I, like I said, I'm, I'm not gonna have them number one either. Uh, or I'm not gonna have them number one. I want to, but I, I'm not gonna do that. But uh, but I, I have the Lakers in number three, uh, simply because um, you know, when I look at free agency, just like I look at the draft, uh, you know, the draft is is not necessarily about going out and getting the best player. It's about going out and getting the best player that fits what you're trying to do. And that's the same thing. You got to look at free agency. You got to look at when you go out there and you look in the player pools. You got to go out and find guys that's trying to fit what you're trying to do. And the Lakers, if you look at the Lakers, they had star power before free agency started. They already had. They got LeBron. They got AD. And they got and they got Russell. So they had the star power. So they didn't need no more big name, big name stars because you got your star power already. You got that down pat. If they if, if all three didn't stay healthy, then everything would be okay. So. You, you got your star power, but what you was missing was some big man, some true big man down low, and you was missing some shooters uh, that Braun and Russ kicked the ball at too, and they drive to the lane and everybody converge on. And, and spacing, of course, because we didn't have good spacing last year at all either, I don't think. So, like like you said, we went out and we got Owen Ellington. We went out and we got 
uh, uh, Carmelo, who's a spot up shooter still. He, he's not much on the defensive end, but at this point in his career, I, I mean, he's never been a defensive guy anyway. So I mean, you know, I mean, you just take what you get with him on the defensive end. But I think on the offensive end, you know, he's a guy that can still spot up mid range and hit that jumper. And if you give him the ball, he can still ISO and do that little jab step and that little pull up like yeah, he always do. He's still a mid range monster. And 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 if you drive and kick, he can hit that corner three or he can hit three from top of the key. I mean, he can still put the ball in the bucket. So so you get him coming off the bench, you get Ray Ellington, like like you just said, Kent Bazemore. Uh, he he was played for the Lakers before. He's a journeyman. Like, he's been around the league, but everywhere he's been, he's proven himself to be a spot up shooter. And last year for the Warriors, I thought he played well for the Warriors last year, shooting the ball off the dribble, uh, off the pass, off the screen. So, I mean, you got some shooters. Uh, Malik Monk, I wouldn't just necessarily call him a steal because, um, I mean, dude was virtually invisible in Charlotte. I mean, I couldn't find him, man. Shot 42% I mean, from the three. But, That's all I need uh, but, but we don't, we don't, But we didn't see it, though. <laughs> Wasn't it a quite two? Charlotte don't get no national television. <laughs> I mean, Charlotte was actually Charlotte was a good team this year. Now they was a good team. They the was in the play in. About Charlotte was Lamelo. They Lamello. was in the play in. They was in the play in. They was in the play in. But that, that, that anytime you saw a highlight, it was Lamelo with oh. pass. Lamelo with well, a circuit Bridges shot, ducking on somebody. Yeah, uh, Miles Bridges. But like I, one dunk. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, what I'm saying is, you know, Malik Monk is kind of like a known unknown. I mean, we know what he can do, but we still don't know what he can do because we just ain't, ain't been, you know, we ain't been able to see it. So when you, so maybe you get, if you put him around guys who are known to bring the best out of people, like LeBron can bring the best out of you, Russ Westbrook can help you and, and lead you, guide you in the right direction. So maybe, you know, we'll see his, you know, shades of what he was in Kentucky uh, for that one year, and, and and we'll see how he is. And then Kitchen Nunn, you know, he's a young guy and he took a pay cut to come to the Lakers. So, I mean, that just shows you how much, you know, how much he wanted to be a part of the Lakers. And I think he's a, he's a good, solid backup point guard, and I think he would be better than a shooter ever was once he gets in there. Because Schroeder, Schroeder was good in spurts, but when you really needed him to be good, he wasn't. And then he topped that off by trying to ask for $100 million to $120 million. And just like I said before, I wouldn't give Schroeder 120 pesos because he's just not that guy. And, 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 and I hate guys that come in and they have two or three good games and they think they ought to get a Supermax. I mean, I, 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 I hate that. And that's the kind of type of guy he was, and that's where Drummond was. Drummond thought he, you know, he was Shaq, Shaq uh, Will Chamberlain, and, and uh, Abdul Jabbar all in one. And, and that's why he ain't no team no more. What did I tell you about Andre Drummond? Well, I, well, I tried to what, get him. What did I tell you about I, I tried to get Andre him. Drummond is a better rebound than Kwame Brown. <laughs> The man can't catch the basketball, and when he do, he fumble it. He ain't got no moves. He is a catch and finish player. Detroit and Cleveland was trying to use him as catch the ball, face up, make a move, get to the bucket. Uh, I mean, it worked to a certain extent, but that's not who that man is. Catch the ball around the rim and finish it. Catch an alley oop. And I also had Dennis Schroeder on my biggest loser list, as an honorable mention. The man turned down an $80, $84 million extension. He might not get picked up at all. Got to the playoffs and laid an egg, and now he got no interest. Nobody. Nobody. Okay, exactly. But back to, I got the Lakers at number three. You know, you know just the same reasons you said, that just like I said, we got they got shooters now. Uh, they got Dwight Howard back, a true big man, and he, and he really had the Lakers in the bubble. Him and Javel McGee did because they knew their role, and they, and they did it very well. And they knew uh, whenever they – Whenever that name was called, they came in and they did what they were supposed to do. So we got, I think, I think we still need another big man because I don't think Marcus all will hold up. So I think we need to try to go out there and find some another young, young big man. Or I think we need a stretch four. A stretch four, another big body. But, but I like the moves they made. They uh, catered to their needs. A little, some of the guys are a little old, but, but, but um, I, I will say this: if you average out everybody on the Lakers right now in age, and you average out everybody on the Brooklyn Nets in age, the Nets are older. Why everybody talk about us? The Nets are older team than the Lakers. But anyway, that's not our bench. So I got the Lakers at number three as uh, winners. Number two, um, I have Miami at number two. I'm going to put Miami Heat at number two and uh, because I, I like the moves they made, but I still don't think it'll help them get over. I, I, uh, uh, because Miami pretty much had the same team this year as they had the year before when they went to the bubble. And they got swept by the same team that they beat in five games. 
you know, think Kyle coming in and knowing how to win a championship kind of kind of gives them an kind of gives them an edge. It gives them an edge, but I mean, I don't think we can say that they're just going to come in after one year and they're going to dethrone the Bucks. I'm not saying they're going to dethrone the Bucks. I, I mean, I mean, they. I mean, I mean, they're a better they team. They could. I, I, they're a better team, and I mean, yes, they could. They they, they, they equipped, they, man. I, they, I mean, they very well could, but do you think they really can? Uh, do you think they're mentally tough enough? To do that, I mean, the Bucks grew up this year. I mean, injury riddle, playoff run or not, uh, they grew up. I was up. gonna say that we wouldn't be having <laughs> the Bucks conversation <laughs> if the Brooklyn Nets were healthy. Uh, oh, it's, oh no, we wouldn't no. be having it if Kevin Durant wore the right size shoe in the, in the game seven, <laughs> or, or if he was just if he was that guy, which he's not anyway. <laughs> but um, but um. But I think Miami definitely got better because you got the veteran press, like you said, in, in Kyle Lowry, and they still got going drive it, right? No, no. Uh, Gordon went to Toronto. Oh, he's like, okay, okay. Okay, so they got Kyle Lowry in place of Gordon, which is really a, a, a fair deal because, I mean, Drive is a good player, but he couldn't stay healthy. So hopefully maybe he can stay healthy in Toronto. But, but that's a good that's a good swap. But I, I still think – I don't think they're the favorites. I mean, they're not going to beat the Nets. And like I said, right now to me, it's the Nets and the Bucks. I mean, you know, you still got Boston. Boston's still there. You know, I think once they didn't make any moves. They didn't make any moves, but I mean, the state, I mean, they, I mean, I mean, you got Jalen Brown back healthy. He's gonna come back healthy. Marcus Smart will be back healthy. But they're still they the got, same team. They couldn't team. score the basketball without having Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown on the floor together. Okay, well, I mean, when you take your two best guys off the court, I mean, what you supposed to do? Yeah, somebody got to do something. <laughs> <laughs> You don't just supposed to go to complete junior high looking basketball team when them two on the, not on the floor. <laughs> well, I mean, you gotta realize when they are on the floor, their usage rate is high. It is high. So it I is. mean, I, I mean, they they don't really give nobody else a chance to score the ball. Then also, Brad Stevens moved to the front office. I think Brad Stevens was a pretty good coach. But now they got the situation that he was in. Uh, who did they hire? You got I mean, you do. I mean, you do. Uh, he's been assistant know. coach forever, and, and and he's been up under some great basketball minds. And he wasn't a bad basketball player himself, you know, when he played for the Spurs. So I think that was a good. I think that was a good deal. I, I think they'll. I think that'll be a good. Uh, I think that was a steal for a head coach. All the head coaching hires, recent ones. I think that was a great one that we kind of sweep under the rug. But but I think. Uh, but I like the moves Miami made. Uh, I mean, they definitely got better. But I don't think it puts them in in, in a prime position to take over the East. I mean. A healthy Brooklyn Nets team uh, will murder this team. And I think, and I still yeah, think the Bucks. The Nets team will murder a, a <laughs> lot of teams. <laughs> but I still think the Bucks. I still think right now the Bucks are still a better team than Miami. Even even they don't have P.J. Tucker no more, I still think the Bucks are better. Because the Bucks kept Bobby Portis. And that was a big move. Wow. What you mean, wow? wow. You see what Bobby Portis did in the playoffs? In that one game? Uh, one game. And they close that game. I'm not talking about. I'm not talking about scoring. I'm talking about energy. I'm talking about mentality. I'm talking about hustle. That's what I'm talking about. He, he, Bobby he brought, Portis is Alex Caruso. No, he's not. Pasta. No. <laughs> now come on, man. So, so, so Miami. So, so where you got Miami going next year? Uh, you got them in the East Conference Finals after they got swept out in the first round this year. This ain't the same team. Uh, they didn't have all the depot. Well, who's, uh, they didn't have Kyle Lowry. Okay, but oh, this boy's not gonna start. Well, I'm, I'm, it's not, who, he's not gonna start at the two guard. He's not gonna start. Who's gonna start at the two guard? Tyler Hero. Who? <laughs> Tyler Man. Hero. Bucket. <laughs> the boy, number fourteen. Yes, no one we ain't seen since he did the scowl in like game three. But well, we ain't seen all the people. We ain't seen all the people either. Oh, that's just because he can't stay healthy. He's still a better player than Tyler Hero. Well, uh, availability is the best ability. It is. But well, at least he's there. All the deep ball started too. Okay, we'll see. Tyler Hero was better when he was coming off the bench. Uh, Tyler Hero has been working uh, this summer. He's been. Where Duncan at? Duncan is coming off the bench. Hmm? He's a, he's a small forward. He come yeah. off he come off the bench. Jim okay. Brothers is a is a is a all the deep ball started too far. Well, I mean that's yet to be seen. But I mean, I like the moves they made, but but I still don't think it catapults them to, you know, to. I don't think they're better than the Bucks. I don't think they're better than the Nets. Uh, I got a number three needs right now. Number three. Number three needs. I got a number three needs. And uh, so, Lakers, 
Miami, and then number one, I got the Bulls. I just switched them around because I thought the Bulls, you know, they went, they were down here, and now they're up here. I mean, you know, now still, with saying that, I still don't have them. I don't think they're better than Miami. I don't think they're better team than Miami because at the end of the day, uh, they have Bucevic, Lonzo, Levine, and DeRozan. But you got to put all that together. And those four guys, you know, I mean, they're very diverse. I mean, they do everything differently. And and after them four, I mean, who else do you have? You got Caruso, who might who might mess around and get a starting spot. Oh, well, he's not. No. Why not? Where are you gonna start? Why he's not? not gonna start at the point. That's Lonzo. Okay. He's not gonna start at the two. That's Levine, and he's not gonna start at the three. That's DeRozan. Well, you wouldn't bring DeRozan off the bench. No. You wouldn't bring him off the bench. No. DeRozan is one of the best scorers in the NBA. What am I bring him off the bench for? One of the best scorers in the league. One of the best scorers in the league. And who? he can facilitate the offense who? for you when Lonzo not doing it. Says who? This man is one of the best scorers in the NBA. On what grounds? Have you seen this mid-range game? Well, everybody <laughs> got everybody got a mid-range game. Man, the mid-range that game is dead in the NBA except for DeRozan, Chris Paul, and Devin Booker. It's, it's a couple more guys that got a mid-range too. A couple more, but you ain't heard. You mm-hmm. ain't. You, we ain't talking about it. DeMar DeRozan. He's not he's one of the best scorers in the league. So. What did this what? man do in Toronto? This man done averaged 20, 25 points a game multiple years. What did he do for the Spurs recently? Oh, man. What is Team what? USA doing on the pop? What have you done for me? Like, I, I, I'm not trying to talk. We're going to get to that. <laughs> I'm going to get to that. What have you done for me lately? DeRozan. He facilitated a lot of offense for him. I think his uh, highest assist totals is with the Spurs. And, and I, that man is one of the, has okay. been one of the best scorers in the so, NBA. Lonzo Ball, Lonzo Ball, uh, Levine, DeRozan. Who, who's, who's a four? I don't know. Bruce Vish is a son. I, I, I don't know. So you got a four. four so, so they don't really have a bench. You got Caruso coming off the bench, and who else you got coming off the bench? Right, they, they still got to move moves. Kobe White. Yeah, you got Kobe White and, over there. And who, else? who else? They, they still got Denzel Valentine. But nah, he ain't on the team anymore. I mean, the Bulls don't have a bench, and, and they never really have had one. So, I mean, I, yeah, I don't cap both them. I, I mean, they definitely got better. Uh, they're not going to be playing for the play-in. Uh, they in the Eastern Conference. Yeah. Well, I mean, I mean, they're not going to be in the play-in. I mean, last year they wouldn't even qualify for the play-in. They're in the Eastern Conference. But I think he could be on the 500 and make play in in these comments. Okay, well, Zach Levine got hurt towards the end of the year. I think if he didn't get hurt, I think they would have been in the play in. They would have been playing for the play in. So I think now, I think it's safe to say that the Bulls would be a, a, a outright, have an outright seed in the playoffs. They'll be in a, a straight playoff seed. So they'll be 7 8 seed. No, no, no. 7 8. They'll be top 5. They'll be top 5? I think they'll be top what? 5. So you think they're better than Atlanta? Right now? And New York? With the moves they made, mm-hmm. the Bulls, yeah, they better than the, the Knicks because I have no faith in Kemba Walker. Okay, well, I have like, no faith in Kemba Walker. Yes, I think they better than Atlanta too okay. because Atlanta's, you know, they're young but they're dumb. <laughs> they are. They, uh, uh, they're just a. Uh, I mean, they really had that. Sit, they really had the Bucks beat with or without Trey Young. They had the Bucks beat and they whiff. They really did, and 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 they whiff. They was up too old, correct? And they with? No, no, no. Where they? No, they, it's one one. It's it? one one or two zero. One one. Okay. okay, they stole. They stole game one, mm-hmm. and they lost game two. Yeah. Okay. And okay. They went back in one game for. Okay, but they was in. Uh, they had the advantage, even with that trade up. It's hard have not having your floor general, man. When you bring in, when you bring in Lou Williams, who is a scorer to run your offense for you, man, it's, it's hard when you got your floor general. Okay, but Lou Williams been playing ball for for hundred years. He ought to know better. Then Bogdanovich not fully healthy. So it was but you had Hurdle getting buckets, John Collins, and Clint Capella on the boards. Okay, but what did the Hawks do to get better? They re-signed John Collins. Yeah, they did. That. And that's it. And, that's and they re-signed Trey Young. Got Trey Young. So, so what else they do to get better? So they got the same they team they had make, before. They didn't make no moves. So like I said, I got I got Miami and I got uh, the Bulls over the, over the Hawks right now because they made moves to get better and the Hawks did not. They so getting Kemba and Evan Fournier, what what did they do for New York? They don't. They don't move down. Okay, they what don't did, make them no better. Okay, what was Kemba and Evan Fournier done before they came to the Knicks? I don't know, but uh, nothing. Evan Fournier turned it up in international play. Yeah, he's doing great international play, but he, but he wasn't doing anything for Boston. I mean, nothing. He disappeared. He had a lot of offers. I mean, he had games where he didn't even score. 
And Kemba Walker, I, I said this before, and I say that Kemba Walker ain't done nothing since he hit that step back at Master Square Garden uh, when he played for UConn. That man balled in Charlotte. No, he didn't. That man balled in Charlotte. Listen to what you said. He balled in where? Charlotte. It, it, Charlotte. Yeah. Wow. Michael George's team. Yeah, Michael George's team. The team he can't run. They need to, need to set a team. But anyway, so but I like the moves that these three teams made. The Lakers got better. And, and I think the Lakers are, are, the, are the threat to beat in the West. Because if you look at all the other teams in the West, the Clippers, Kawhi Leonard's going to be out for most of the season. Kawhi Leonard ain't even signed back over there yet. We don't know what Kawhi is oh, He's coming off the of dentist. Uh, he's coming back. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I wouldn't put nothing past Kawhi. Who do you think he's going to go? I don't know. No, but I think. Man, you might mess around and see Kawhi in Dallas with Luka or something. Well, but he's not gonna play. But he's not gonna play for most of the season. The West is wide open, other than other than the Lakers. Well, I mean, the Clippers they didn't do anything to get better. Because uh, I thought they were gonna get DeMar DeRozan, and they didn't. So, and I'm glad they didn't. So, so I mean, so I don't, I don't really see them. Uh, the Nuggets they stayed the same. And I, I'm not I'm not worried about I'm not worried about Denver with or without Jamal Murray. I'm not worried about Denver. Uh, Portland, like you said, they was a bona fide loser. Uh, Utah. Utah. They stayed the same. Not worried about Utah because when it all oh, they brought in Rudy, they got Rudy Gay. Who? They got Rudy Gay. It's a solid score in basketball. It used to be. Uh, so, uh, the West is wide open, but I think right now the Lakers are defending their favor. I just don't think yeah. you can trust. You can't trust Utah in the playoffs, man. You, you can't. You can't trust Utah at all. You. I mean, that was the best. They had the best record in the league all year. They I mean, did. They kind of overachieved. I think Phoenix will achieve, and then they stayed the same. Well, I mean, they brought in Javale, but, but, but they didn't have to really. Uh, you know, I think Phoenix had to. Phoenix don't have to make that many moves. I think they're good where they are, so I think they'll be right back where they were before. So you know, Devin Booker come back more motivated. Chris Paul, I mean, Chris Paul to me, you know, Chris Paul. I, I have great respect for Chris Paul, but he's just a loser. He's just a loser. The dude can't win. I mean, he was up two zero in the finals. And you had the ball in your hand in game four and five with a chance to go up 3 1. And if you win that game, you got a chance to win the series. And he gagged both games. And what did he do in the last game? Nothing. I'm not going to put that on Chris Paul. I, I will. I'm not going to put that on Chris put Paul. On? I'm going to put it on Monta Williams. Why? This man tried to guard Giannis Antetokounmpo one on one the entire series. He didn't double him. He didn't build a wall, which we know we've seen what the wall does to Giannis in the past. This man didn't do nothing. He tried to defend this man one on one with DeAndre Ayton, Cam Johnson, uh, what's the other wing man's name? Um, Brit Mikael Bridges. He tried to guard him one on one with these players. That ain't Chris Paul's fault. But Chris Paul turned the ball over. He did. The late in the game. He did. He had some the ball, turnovers. the ball in his hand with a chance to go up. To go Once up. they made the switch to Drew Holiday to Chris Paul, that changed the series. But I'm not letting Money Williams off the hook for this man with this terrible defensive strategy. Well, I'm not letting Chris Paul off the hook either because quiet as kept. Uh, uh, Money Williams don't play, the, don't play the game. He was he was on the sideline. Chris Paul was the one that had the ball in his hand with the game on the line. And he gagged. Just like he always do. Chris Paul is a loser. You got to know what to do, too. Take Chris Powell off the ball. Go small. Put Cameron uh, Payne in the game. Let him run the offense a little bit. Let Devin Booker bring the ball down the floor. Ever since they put Drew Holiday on this man, Chris Powell trying to turn his back and back the ball all the way down the floor. Take him off the ball. You can't go no smaller than Chris Paul. I, I, you, you trust campaign in the, in, in, the, in the waiting moments of the game? All I need you to do is get the ball across half court and give it to Devin Booker. <laughs> Well, I mean, I mean, Book had the ball in his hand too, and he got ripped. He got hit, uh, his cookie stolen at the cookie jar too. But, but Chris Paul's supposed to be that guy. That playoff youth that everybody said didn't show in the first three rounds that finally came out in the finals. Yeah, but that, uh, with that inconsistency and that and and and, and that deer in the headlights and that unclutchness and that losing mentality that Chris Paul has always shown when he gets this came out. And it came out. I'm uh, I, I'm glad he didn't come to the Lakers. I, I don't want Chris Paul now. I want him ten years ago. I don't want him now. But uh, anyway, uh, not to get way off subject here. Like I said, I the, the Lakers, the Bulls, and and uh, the Miami Heat were my three winners. 
and I, and I had the same losers as you had. Cause like you said, the, uh, uh, Philadelphia, they didn't do anything to get any better. They got Andre Drummond, and Andre Drummond, uh, I guess all they're going to do is pack the paint up now. Because, I mean, you know, if they really have no space, and now, as of right now, there's still guys out there they can get. But I think they're still trying to move Ben Simmons. I don't know where. I heard that they're trying to move him to Portland. They're trying to bring Dan Lillard over there, but I don't know how that's going to work. I mean, that, that would be great if they could. Or, or – Try to get him to go to Golden State, maybe again. But like I said, Darren Moore is asking too much, way, way too much for Ben Simmons for a guy like you said. They can't, they can't put the ball in the ocean sitting in the boat. So I mean, uh, I don't know about, I don't know what they're gonna do there. But Philadelphia, they definitely didn't get no better. And even if they did, I wouldn't give them no credit because I had no faith in them either. I never have. I had no faith in nobody in Philadelphia but Rocky Balboa. That's it. So, so uh. Uh, for Philadelphia, uh, and just like you said, uh, you had the Pelicans. They uh, only thing they did was make their best player upset, and and I don't know how that's going to end. That's going to be an ugly ending over there. And then uh, of course the Trailblazers. We all know what they do. They they just they don't cater to their spot. And they got Chauncey Billups, the head coach, and I think that was a good move. But I mean, yeah, you got to have a coach now. Gotta have, it was a bad move. <laughs> well, I mean, the way he was looking, <laughs> I just say the way he was looking, like you didn't agree. You got a, a team that can't get over the hump, and you go get a first year coach. That... Well, well, I mean, part of the reason why they can't get over the hump is because of Dane Lillard. Now, I, I love Dane, but I mean, let's just be honest. Now, now, now he's had his playoff phase. Yeah. Dame is arguably the clutchest player in the NBA. Dame ain't going he he gonna get his. He gonna put up numbers. But you got to have some help. You have to you have to play some defense. They didn't bring nobody that's doing any of that. He's gonna score, CJ's gonna score, Powell's gonna score. Who's gonna defend anybody? No Powell can guard. But who else? Where's your rim protection? Is that Nurkis. what Cody Zell is supposed to do? But they still got Nurkic, though. Or Tony Snell? <laughs> Nurkic ain't been the same since Brian dunked on him. <laughs> well, that is true. But, but he did tell ACL, too. No, he did do that. But nonetheless, we're going we to go to the next topic. Let's go, we're going to talk about Team USA. Uh, uh, they uh, won last night in the comeback victory over Australia. And they will play France for the gold medal game. So, your thoughts on that? On this horrible Team USA. I sat here in this chair about three weeks ago and told 